Hello friends, today in this video we are going to discuss about some characteristics of amino acid that are zwitter ion, amphoteric molecule and isoelectric point. So in this video we are going to discuss about all these characteristics. So at first we have to know the dissociation of amino acid in some solution like water. How amino acid dissociate in solution. So in low pH the basic structure of amino acid is like this. So here the CWH group is present, here the NH3 plus group is present and one R group is present which is variable in different amino acid. R represent the side chain of amino acid. Okay. So this is the main basic structure of amino acid, any amino acid in low pH. Low pH means the hydrogen ion concentration is high and high pH means the hydrogen ion concentration is low. Okay. So now in low pH that means in medium or in solution the hydrogen ion concentration is high. So when we add base into this medium, that time the hydro, uh, the pH will be raised. So the hydrogen ion concentration will be low in the medium. So from the amino acid, the H, so the CWH group release their hydrogen into the medium because the hydrogen ion concentration in the medium is low. So CWH group release their hydrogen into the medium when we add some base into the medium. So here we can see this structure, the hydrogen ion is released from the CWO group, CWH group. Okay. So now when we add more, more base into the medium, then more hydrogen will be released from the amino acid into the medium. So here in next, the hydrogen will be released from this NH3 plus group. So here this is the structure of amino acid at high pH and it is in intermediate pH and it is in low pH. Okay. So in low pH, the overall charge is positive and in intermediate pH at a some certain intermediate pH, the net charge will be zero and in high pH, the net charge is negative. Okay. So now, so now we will know what is the sweeter ion structure. So here we can see that one positive group and one negative group is present in this structure and so that means it is a dipolar ion. So any molecule that contain a positive charge and a negative charge that structure is known as the zwitter ion. Okay. So this structure of amino acid it is known as the zwitter ionic structure of amino acid and this zwitter ionic structure can act as both acid and base. It can act both as an acid and also can act as a base. Okay. So how we can see here. So when this structure take the hydrogen or H plus ion from the medium and produce this structure that time it act as an acid. So when this structure uptake or accept hydrogen ion from the medium and produce this structure that time it act as an acid. And when it is, it can act as a base. So when it act as a base, it release its hydrogen from the NH3 plus group and produce this structure. That time it represent or uh, act like a base. So this molecule or amino acid can act both as an acid and can act both as a base. That's why it is called the amphoteric molecule because an amphoteric molecule is a molecule that can act both as an acid and base. That's why the amino acid also known as an amphoteric molecule. Okay. And next is isoelectric point. So this, this is a zwitteronic structure. That means net charge is zero. So when a molecule or when the, when the amino acid is present in its zwitteronic state, that means no net charge, net, net charge is zero. That means it is electrically, electrically uh, neutral that pH that means when we when we get this structure or electrically neutral structure at a pH that pH is known as the isoelectric point at which pH we get this zwitteronic structure that pH is known as the isoelectric point or isoelectric pH okay so in next we will uh, we will calculate the isoelectric point or isoelectric pH of different amino acid okay so at first we have to Mean we have to know the basic dissociation of acid, how uh, amino acid dissociate. Okay, so suppose this is our acid and it dissociate into its component ions that is H plus and A minus. And this 
two component ions can reassociate into their acid okay and when when the dissociation of this acid into its component ions and the reassociation of component ions to its acid is equal the rate the rate of dissociation and rate of association is equal that time we get an equilibrium between these molecules we will get an equilibrium between these molecules and the concentration of acid at that equilibrium is known as the acid dissociation constant that is represented by k i repeat it this is the acid when this when the dissociation of acid into its component ions and the reassociation rate of this component ions to its acid when the rate is equilibrium rate of this mo uh, different molecules is equilibrium rate of dissociation rate of association is in uh, equal that time we get an equilibrium between these molecules okay and and the concentration at which this equilibrium reached that concentration is known as the acid dissociation constant which is a constant constant concentration okay so now how uh, we can represent this k as pk that is the minus log of ka so we know that ph ph here in ph h represent the hydrogen ion concentration so here in pk k represent the concentration at equilibrium condition so at equilibrium the concentration of acid is represented by ka okay and pk means here the minus log k so this is the main concept now we will see different amino acid how they dissociate and from their dissociation how we can calculate the isoelectric point by this acid dissociation constant okay so now at first discuss about the alanine so this is the alanine structure at low ph and it is the it is its side chain that is one ch3 group so this is <coughs> its uh, structure in low ph that is the net charge is positive and now now uh, we have to see this curve so when we raise the ph of the medium that means we adding base into the medium that time the <coughs> medium the ph of the medium will be high that means the hydrogen and concentration of the medium will be low so the hydrogen from the amino acid will be released so this hydrogen hydrogen ion will be released from this amino acid okay and produce this structure so here we can see that we are adding we are adding base into the medium and ph will be raised and at a certain point at a certain point the equilibrium will be reached by this two component here also the uh, this is this structure plus h plus ion is present here a minus is this one h plus ion is also present and h a means this part okay so now when we raise the uh, ph that means when we add the uh, base into the medium that time at a certain point at a certain point at a certain point the equilibrium will be reached between these two molecule okay and that concentration is known by ka that concentration will known by ka and the ph at which that equilibrium reached is known as the pk and here this is the first hydrogen is released that's why it, it's called as pk1 and at pk 2.34 that means here in 2.34 this is the 2.34 ph so here at this point the first hydrogen is released from the alanine structure okay and in next so here the uh, one positive charge and one negative charge is here so this is the net charge is zero this molecule net charge is zero that is the zwitteronic state of alanine okay so now when we raise more ph that means when we add more base into the medium next the hydrogen will be released from this nh3 group so here we can see that the net charge is negative at high ph of alanine into the medium okay so when we raise the ph or add the base at a certain point at a certain point here at a certain point the concentration at which the concentration is known as k and 
at the pk that is 9.2 that means a certain point and equilibrium is reached where the rate of dissociation of this into dissociate into this component ion and the reassociation of the component ion into this structure is equal the rate of dissociation and rate of reassociation is equal that's why at that's why we get an equilibrium at this point and that ph or that p, uh, that point is known as a pka so that is a 9.7 for alanine so in 9.7 pka the equilibrium is reached between between these two molecule okay so now we have to calculate the pi of alanine so pi means the isoelectric point so isoelectric point how we can calculate so we have to see the zwitterionic state so zwitterionic state where the neut where the net charge is zero that at at the ph at which we get this zwitterionic state that ph is known as the isoelectric point so we have to take these two by two so this is the formula of isoelectric point so we have to take so this point that is the 2.4 2.34 plus this point that ph is 9.7 9.7 by 2 that is around 6 so the isoelectric point or we can get the isoelectric point that means at a ph at which the zwitterionic state we get for alanine that is the 6 so at 6 ph we will get the zwitterionic state of alanine where the net charge of the alanine is 0 okay so in this way we can get the isoelectric point of alanine so next is the glutamic acid so how we can calculate the isoelectric point of glutamic acid so glutamic acid is a positively charged sorry it is a negative charged uh, amino acid because here in the side chain also a c double h group is present okay so at low ph it is present in its positive charge so when we raise the ph that means when we add the base into the medium first hydrogen will be released from this CWH group okay at the pk of 2.19 okay so this is that means at the equilibrium 2.19 this uh, the hydrogen is released and it is in its equilibrium state so now in next when we add more base the hydrogen will be next released by this side chain CWH group and that's why it is called the PKR R means the side chain group so at the pH at the pK 4.25 the next hydrogen is released from the side chain group CWH group okay and now here the net charge is minus 1 and now when we raise more uh, when we add more base next the hydrogen will be released from the NH3 group okay so final we will get the glutamic acid that is the negative minus 2 net charge is minus 2 at the pk that is 9.67 so now we have to calculate the isoelectric point for glutamic acid so at first we have to get where our zwitterionic state or zwitterionic structure is present so here our zwitterionic structure that is the net charge is zero here the net charge is zero the glutamic acid so we have to take this pk1 and pkr so that is 2.19 and 4.25 2.19 and 4.25 by 2 this is the formula so here we get the 3.22 so at a ph at a at that ph the zwitterionic state of glutamic acid is reached and the net charge of the of the structure is zero that means new that means electrically neutral structure so at that ph at that ph we get the zwitterionic structure of glutamic acid and that phase is known as the isoelectric point of glutamic acid where there is no electrically uh, electrical movement of the glutamic acid okay so in next we will discuss about the histidine histidine is a positively charged amino acid so here this is the so this is the structure of histidine so here it, it is present at first at low ph it is present in its positive charge so it is the at the low pH it is present its plus two net charge and now when when we raise the uh, 
uh, when we raise the pH, that means when we add some base into the medium, that time the first hydrogen will be released by CWH group at a pK that is 1.82. Next, it is present in its plus 1 structure, that means nature is plus 1. And next, when we raise, add more base into the medium, next the hydrogen will be released from the side chain group that is NH+. Plus. Here, the hydrogen will be released from the side chain group and the pK at the pK that is the 6, <coughs> pH 6. And in next, and in next, the hydrogen will be released from the NH3 group and produce this minus 1 structure. So one thing we have to remember that other uh, other positively charged amino acid that is lysine, arginine, that in that amino acid at first the hydrogen is released from the uh, CWH group first the release from the CWH group then released by the NH3 group then released from the side chain group but in histidine it is an exception at first it is released from the CWH group then released from the side chain group then released from the nitrogen uh, NH3 group okay so this is the difference so now let's come to here how we can calculate the isolectric point of histidine so at first we can see that zwitternik structure so this is the so this is the zwitternik structure of histidine so we have to take the pkr that is 6 and pk2 that is 9.17 so 6 plus 9.17 by 2 is the 7.59 so this is the isolectric point of histidine so at that pH, the zwitternik state of histidine is reached, and that is the and there is no net charge, or that is it is electrically neutral. So that pH is known as this pH is known as the isolectric point of histidine. Okay, so in this way we can calculate or calculate the isolectric point, and here also we know the zwitternik structure and amphoteric molecule. Okay, thank you for watching this video.